Hi friends, today we are going to start a new topic, and that is the dry cell. Could you imagine a place where there is no dry cell? Where are all the electrical devices that would have to be plugged in? Then electric appliances like cell phones and toys would have to be plugged in all the time, otherwise they will not work. In that case, Electrical appliances would always be connected to electrical outlets, making them inconvenient and difficult to handle. We need something that can store energy inside it, so that the stored energy can be used by electrical appliances. A dry cell is a device that stores energy inside it. A dry cell is a type of battery that provides convenient and portable sources of energy for powering electrical appliances without making use of any cable or wire. The dry cell was developed by the German scientist Carl Gassner in 1886. The dry cell is also known as the dry Leclanche cell. Dry cells are used in cameras, wall clocks, flashlights, and so much more. A dry cell is generally made up of metallic cylinder. It has a metallic cap on top and a flat base on the bottom. The metallic cap on the top is the positive terminal of the cell. The flat base is the negative terminal of the cell. And it is called the dry cell because it does not contain any liquid. Therefore, a dry cell can operate in all positions without spilling. When we connect two or more cells together, we get a battery. So a battery is just a combination of two or more cells. Or we can say that a battery is an electrical device consisting of two or more cells. Now, we will be learning the working of a dry cell. Energy is stored inside a dry cell in the form of chemical energy. Now the question that arises here is, what is chemical energy? We know everything in this universe is made up of matter. A matter is something that occupies space and has mass. Matter is made up of smaller units, called molecules. And molecules are further made up of atoms. Chemical energy is the energy that is stored in the bonds between the molecules and atoms. So, chemical energy holds molecules and matter together. Also, chemical energy holds the atoms in a molecule together. When the bonds between molecules break down, then the molecules try to rearrange themselves. Similarly, when the bond between atoms break down, then the atoms try to rearrange themselves. And while rearranging themselves, they release chemical energy. This process is known as a chemical reaction. Well, have you ever noticed that when you eat healthy food, you feel energized? This is because we get energy from the food that we eat. And that energy is stored inside of our body in the form of chemical energy. The dry cell also has chemical energy stored inside. It converts the stored chemical energy into electrical energy. So the dry cell generates electrical energy. Now we will learn in detail about the dry cell, which is a type of battery that is used today. Basically a dry cell is made up of three components. A positively charged electrode which is called the cathode. A negatively charged electrode which is called the anode. And an electrolyte present between both electrodes. The cathode which is positively charged is made up of graphite which is a form of carbon. The anode, which is negatively charged, is made up of zinc. And the electric light is actually a paste of ammonium chloride. Now let's see what happens inside of the cell. In the case of a dry cell, electrons are in excess in the negative electrode, that is the anode. And these extra electrons in the anode try to move towards the cathode which is positively charged electron. But the electrolyte which is present between the two electrodes does not allow the electrons to move directly towards 
the positive electron. So we need to connect the positive and the negative electron with the help of some conducting wires. And the flow of electrons starts from the anode to the cathode. This is why we attach a conducting wire from the anode to the cathode and the electrons start flowing from the negative electrode towards the positive electrode through the conducting wire. And if you will connect any bulb across that connecting wire, it will start glowing because of the flow of electrons, that is, the electric current. The current flows or the electrons move from the anode to the cathode till all the electrons in excess at the anode have moved to the cathode. Now let's discuss how a dry cell can be used to light a light bulb. For that we will consider a simple electric circuit. In this circuit we have a light bulb as an electric device which converts electricity into heat and light energy. And the battery is the source of electricity. And then we have a wire which is made up of a conducting material which allows an electric current to pass through it. For example, copper wire. We also have a switch that starts or stops the flow of electrons in the circuit. When the switch is closed or on, the circuit is complete and the current starts flowing through the circuit. Thus, a closed circuit is a circuit with no gaps in it. A circuit connected to a dead battery may not perform any work but is still considered as a closed circuit. Whereas when the switch is off or if a wire is broken, in both cases the circuit is incomplete. The current cannot flow through the open circuit. The current only flows when the circuit is closed. When the current flows, the electric bulb starts glowing. So in this way we can use a dry cell to light a bulb. The dry cell comes in various forms, like button cells and nickel cadmium cells are the better versions of a dry cell. The button cell is called that way because it looks like a button on a garment. Button cells are small disc shaped batteries, therefore button cells are also known as disc batteries. Button cells are found in many household items like radios, watches, musical greeting cards, calculators, and many other small electronic devices. Button cells are very dangerous for small children because if accidentally swallowed, they can cause serious injuries. Nickel cadmium cells are rechargeable cells. Nickel cadmium cells are commonly used in portable computers portable drills, and many other battery-powered devices. The normal voltage of a dry cell is 1.5 volts. So today we have learned about a dry cell, and how a dry cell can be used to light a bulb. We have also learned about open and closed circuits. The current only flows when the circuit is closed, and the current does not flow in an open circuit. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And if you want to see more fun videos, you can hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more content. Bye bye